In this video I'm going to look at the carbs for my Cafe Racer build. If you've been following the playlist you'll have seen that I bought this as actually as a parts bike for another project. It had some attractive parts and if you follow it through you'll find that when I actually stripped the engine down, having got it running and found a few issues, I found some Yoshimura pistons inside it. Now I'm really pleased with the pistons. I've got the barrels board. I'm ready to go that far. I've done the head. You might see the videos for them if you look back in the playlist. I'm now fiddling with the cams. I found another problem. But this video is not about that. You'll have to subscribe to watch that one. What I'm actually doing is I'm thinking about once I've got that problem solved, having carbs that I can put on and make sure the engine runs. Now, the engine did run and it ran with these carbs, so I do know they were carbing at the time. They've been left for five years before I got them, and some of the steel bits have started to corrode, but the actual bodies don't seem too bad, and they look like they've been rebuilt at some point there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the float chambers off, just to check through from the bottom, give it all a blow through with hair. I'm also going to try and take off the, uh, the mechanism that opens the slides, um, the bits that have gone corroded and I'm going to try and clean them up. If need be I'll split the bank but I'm hoping not to get away with not doing that and just cosmetically improving them making sure that I think that they'll work so that I'm ready for when I've solved this next problem with the actual engine to bang them on and get it running. It might be raining today but it's going to be sunny soon and I really want to ride this bike this year. Before I go through these carbs, it might be worth pointing out, I do have a set of the PD style, the later style of carbs. Now, these were brought in when emissions were becoming more of a thing, as an accelerator pump and lots of things, and I rebuilt these for the gold bike. But I ended up getting a set of these for the gold bike, because they're actually easier to set up for a bike. Yeah. So. I'm at the moment planning to use these and have a, a good look through them. Now, to be fair, these carbs were used on the K7 and K8 type bikes, and the head I'm using now is a K8 head. If I'd have been using the F series, the F2 head, these were definitely the carbs that went with that as well. So, you know, I there is an argument I should actually continue looking at them. However, I've got these. I know they ran on this bike originally, albeit before the engine was completely rebuilt. Um, I think I want to reuse them if I can. So I'm going to have the float chains off and have a look. And I'm going to have all of the uh, mechanism here apart so that I can give it a good clean. I'm even thinking I might plate them. We'll see. I might not get to that. A bit of paint might just do it. So let's crack on with these and put them back on the shelf for another few years. Looking at these carbs, the bodies look very clean. They've obviously not just come off a bike off the road like that. Someone has had a good go at these before. The vent tubes, because this is a, a basically an air vent tube, are not standard. They'd normally be black and they've got different clips. So th that's obviously been done and they do look quite clean. The mechanism seems to work fine, the uh, the choke and the accelerator. So, you know, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that. So, I'm going to look and see if I just need to give it a bit of a dust inside, then take off this mechanism and see how I can make it look so much better. Well, the float chambers look about as clean as you could possibly imagine. And they're not new, obviously, but they've, uh, you know, I think it's only the fuel life put in that's caused any kind of uh, an issue with them. And the underside of the uh, floats and all of the jets look reasonably good. So I'm going to blow them through with air, give them a clean, and then I think I'll uh, consider the float chambers as good to go. I've took out 
main jets and pilot jets. The main jets are 110s, the pilot jets are 42. And then the other main setting is the um, float height. Now I've got this actually set at 28, 27 it starts to push down. So it looks like these have been fairly consistently set at 28. Now I know that the the right setting for this is 26 so I am just gonna ease them slightly so that it's sit at 26. At 28 the level of fuel will be a little bit lower which would mean they'd run a little bit leaner and really I want to give this engine the best chance it's got when I first start it so setting them at 26 raises the fuel level a little bit make it run a little bit richer and we're not talking a lot here um, and I think this will be really good just need to get the compressor fired up now so I can blow all the uh, the lines through and make sure that there's air going through before I set the float heights though what I'm going to do is whip off the floats take out the float valves and then get some card cleaner through all of the ports blow some air through all of the uh, the holes in the jets and hopefully that should be good to go. Now anyone who's played about with floats and things will know that coming out like that is a really good sign that this has been uh, recently fettled because quite honestly I've come across these so seized in that you break off the little towers. Well you don't if you've got any sense but it's very easy to do. This one's a bit stiffer. Hang on, let's try it going that way. There we go. And I'll keep them in order, but I'll actually set the heights when I put them back on. I can't believe how easy they came in. If you look at one of the past videos that I did, you will see where I had a real struggle. I think it was with the ones on the gold bike that I had. Be on one of the other playlists. This is looking really good. It's the fact that they haven't been used for five years that's a real issue. Right then, let's get the carb cleaner out. The thing with carb cleaner is it actually dissolves any residue from petrol that was there. So I'm just gonna give it a squirt through. actually see it squirting out at the top end there and it's important these little holes at the front you've got to make sure that yeah these are all either breathers or jets that go through to and I will blow all these through to make sure that they're clear Right, let's fire up the compressor. I think I said that before, but this time I mean it in anger. Always make sure you're wearing safety glasses and probably a respirator if you're doing this, because what you really don't want is to be inhaling all of this. I'm happy with them. Interesting thing I noticed, Called me a little bit of concern at first. There's a little brass vent. I'll try and do a close up of them for you in those ones I've just pointed at. However, not in the two end ones. And I thought that seems odd. At first, I just saw one and I thought, oh, there's one missing. I'll have to find that. Well, I'll have to find one. But what it is, this is a vent tube. So the one at this end obviously lets all the air through to, to hear from the things, uh, from the float chambers. Whereas the one at that end there doesn't go to anything. It's just capped off. So it's okay. Right, let's put those floats back on. That's the little tang that I'll have to adjust to get the float levels right. Do that afterwards. Uh, 
They're about as good as I've ever seen. <laughs> Right, let's do the floats. Now I've put the floats back on. The way to measure these is to have it sloping slightly further forward than I've got so that it's just touching the thing on the, uh, the actual valve. And then in a past video, and I think this might have been on the blue CB750K0 that I had, I made this tool. Now when I was measuring these before and I was using a vernier or a very near. I wasn't really being fair because I wasn't measuring to exactly the right place. You need to measure to the flat on the outside lip. Now bizarrely there is a little notch thing on the inside as well and I have seen people say do it to that. If you do it to that it will be richer. It might actually make your bike run better but I know from past research and from looking just now, supposed to be to this flat. And I made this tool, so it's 26 mil. And this is pretty much the same dimensions as the ones you can get online. And whoever did it had done quite a good job. Yeah, I think I can live with them. Because I haven't adjusted them. I that might no, I think I can live with that. This one though, there's quite a gap, so I am going to raise that one a little bit. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll tilt it forward and I'll bend this little tang and try this a few times until I'm quite happy. Being me, I'll do this two or three times, but I won't make you watch on the camera. I'm intending to take this part of the mechanism and the screws out and notice that there's a an odd one that's wrong there. I'm hoping that if I undo all of these that I'll be able to slide that rod out and then she'll be able to take it away. Let's take that spring off first. Yeah. Oops. Interesting little thing there. It only has two notches at the end. I know when you're building them you think that can't be right. So what have we got? An eight. I'll whip them out first. Probably don't need to take them all the way out to be honest. Just for now, I'll just leave them part way out. And then onto these, and I think there are four. And use the screwdriver just to open up. Just a titty bit. Well, it does move. How much will it move is the question. Now, it is taking this middle thing with it. So, let's take them all the way out. Just on the off chance they're on a flat or something, which is quite possible. Interesting, these screw down and have a lock nut. So, Looks like uh, could be right. Uh, seems all right now. Now there is something going. No, oh, no, it's just a bubble. Now it doesn't actually want to go all the way, does it? So let's try it that way. No, and that doesn't either. Well, it seems loose. Try. Now it looks like there are keys on this shaft in themselves this shouldn't be a problem we don't want to break anything so I'll just keep going gently with it right well it doesn't look like it's going to give up straight
straight away. Come to the conclusion that what I'll have to do is undo these to take the slides out and then undo the frame, pick this up, take the slides out and then I should be able to move these side to side. So need to, these are usually uh, reasonably well in so I'll need to get them out but I'll undo those cups at the top of the card first. What I might also do, before I actually go much further, change this paper so I've got a cleaner working area that I'm working in and tidy some of the tools away. So, leave them like that. Here's my GIS bits for these. And uh, they fit nicely into an 8mm. No need to get the impact driver out for these. They perhaps weren't quite as tight as I would have liked them. <laughs> Probably tight enough. leave the uh, slides in. No wonder everyone uh, throws these rubber boots away. They're a bit of a nuisance. And not only that, they're falling apart. Ah, so good. Really not for giving up easy this, is it? There's keys on this shaft, one on either side of that. So I can only imagine it should go that way. And you pull one out and then go the other way. I didn't resort to the hammer too much and it would appear that these screws that come out of here have a little spacer that goes in here that actually goes into a recess onto the back of the, uh, the shaft. So I think having taken those out and I think Take that one out and take this little one out here and I think I stand a good chance now of this all just pulling apart. Famous last words. Just give that a push. Now, well, I can see why the keyway is catching on there. So let's push it back the other way. Right, now I think I've got to a point where I can take that key out. Maybe wrong, maybe kidding myself. There we go. So that key's come out of that shaft. So let's see if we can go this way now. Well, there isn't a key on the middle, so that one looks like it's okay. And there's the next, the other key, there's one there. It seems a very difficult place to put it. Uh, however, maybe if I go that way, Aha, uh -huh. the other key, and now 
So it just shows I know I have never taken these this mechanism apart before. This is the first time because I think I would have remembered that. I think it's just a case of wiggling now. Oh. Yeah. 50 years of habit doesn't have to keep things together. That's that's okay, that's okay. Go in this way. Move these up a bit more. There is a plastic like thrust washer there. Oh, look at that. There's one out. And what I'll do is I'll lay everything out and take a picture. Because otherwise I might never have a clue about how this will go back together. With carburettors, be careful, because you will always forget where springs and little washers hook and go, and it can be a nightmare. And it's always the bit in somebody else's video that you can't see. But the thing I can see now is having got this out, which I'm sure I will do sometime before I'm too old. He says, there we go, lay it all out, I'll take a picture. Having gone to that effort, I'm going to do a really good job of these. <laughs> well, that was fiddly. It looks like there's a plastic thrust washer that goes against these. It's probably because it's alloy against steel or something, I'm not sure. One on either side. There's the Woodruff keys. There's these little collars. And I think those little collars, when they're on here, go against these. I may be mistaken with that, but certainly until I took them out, it wasn't for giving up. And obviously sometime in the past somebody has lost one of these screws, so I'll have to find another one of them. Uh, I've not had this apart before, or this mechanism, so I've not seen how it goes. And I've still got this to take apart. I think I might just have to take the spring off that. Give it a good clean, and then I'm going to rust proof it. I was thinking I might plate it, but I'm not sure I will now. Um, I think I might just paint it. Let's get it cleaned. While I was looking at this, it came into the two parts. So obviously the spring, it looks like that spring's got to be on that side, which seems quite firm. What I'm gonna to have to do is go back through my video and see how it looked originally. But before I do that, I can, I've got better access now for cleaning them. <laughs> that goes on there. And I think that, that spring goes the other side of that. <laughs> quite a bit of tension. a bit of fiddling but eventually you'll get there but this really does want to jump out now I've already put the uh, cable connectors onto here just loosely so the next thing I need to do 
is that slot in it goes to the left hand side so I need to start off by putting that part on then we have a nylon washer then that kind of spacer then another nylon washer and then what I found was the fiddliest bit because we need to get this bit that way around oh it's come apart <laughs> let's put it back together again it does take a bit of fiddling but you do get there in the end and this part goes on to there next and the next is this when we get to about here you've got the two water of keys that need to go in The Woodruff keys go into there. You find that one goes in first, to be honest, or I did. And when you get into about this part, you're virtually one. Now what you have to do is there are flats on the shaft that these screw into. And there are lock nuts on these as well. You see the flat These little spaces go inside if you don't lose them. <laughs> I'll get there in the end. Gloves aren't helping. And this. Now there are flats on the bar that these actually sneak into. I think you've got the idea. Oh, it's in. Ha. Now, 
Now, for some reason, I didn't realise it at first, but there is a countersink on that end. So maybe when I thought it had the wrong screw in when I was taking it apart, I was mistaken. Maybe it is the right one. Not quite sure why. Right, so everything needs tightening up now. But basically that mechanism is now back together. Next thing I need to do is put the choke mechanism on again. Now I know when I took them off the two shorter ones here were to the outside. Although they are all adjustable. Whether they were set right or not, I'm not sure. And the longer one to the middle. Each one has a washer. Now I thought I had more of these R clips because it just had some wire through in the first instance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy some more of these but because uh, they're a lot neater. There we go. I think that looks a lot smarter than uh, the bits of wire that I'm going to use on the other ones. And the next thing is these. I'm missing off the little rubber boots because uh, they're all pretty poor condition to be honest. But we'll see. I might get some new ones. just want to get these carbs together so that they'll work. I think I may have to have them off again to make them look prettier. Fiddling and that goes on there. Now, before I screw these on, the important thing is this very strange looking little mechanism needs to go in between these two. It doesn't look like it's uh, anything that Sashiro Honda would have really liked. And then that fucks on. So there and that's what actually closes the throttle if you find your throttle is very heavy putting a lighter gauge spring in here can make a difference I've been told I haven't tried it yet but I'm sure I will get screws back in and then the car should be ready to go back on the bike Right, now I've got them all tightened, the final thing I need to do is to actually bench set them, the balance of them. Now, these adjusters do live underneath rubber covers usually, but my rubber covers have uh, perished to nothingness at the moment, so I think a lot of them look like that. It's a 17mm and a 10 The 10's a lock. So you undo that and you can twiddle them up and down with the uh, 17 And the idea is that you set them so that these open at the same time on every single slide and that's your initial setting and then when you set the idle you use the screw that goes up against the uh, the plate here that opens the slides you only have it on one side unfortunately my uh, proper adjuster seems to be missing but that one adjusts all of them together and the one on top that adjust them individually. So you adjust them individually so that they'll all open at the same time. And then the idle, you can't really set until uh, you've got the engine running. That's the carbs ready to go back on the engine that we've now got in the bike. I've tightened everything up, I've bench set them. Um, I think I'm, I'm quite happy to put them on now. So in the next video, I'll put these on the bike, um, put the oil lines on, put the oil filter on, get some oil in it, perhaps put the exhaust on as well and then I'll be at the point where I should be able to start it. Um, probably a few checks on the electrics as well. 
Really uh, enjoyed playing with the carbs this time, to be honest. Very, very fiddly taking this part apart. I was very surprised, actually, at how difficult it was at first. And then once you've got it apart and you can look carefully, it's a bit easier to put back together. Um, so I'm quite happy with them. Uh, they were reasonably clean to start off with, so I haven't had to use any new parts, apart from uh, the bit that was missing there. Hope I didn't lose it, I'll have to look at one of my older videos. Anyway, why not subscribe and join along so that you can see whether this engine does actually run. Um, I'm getting quite excited, although you'll notice in our videos at the moment we're probably having one of the wettest summers we've ever had. It was so bad yesterday, I was actually thinking of making a video of starting building an ark. Really terrible. Anyway, let's hope it starts in time for the sunshine. Thanks very much for watching.